we all dream of that perfect home, right? Yeah. But uh, what happens when those dreams turn into like a construction nightmare? Oh, yeah. Today's deep dive takes us to Baltimore, where one homeowner's quest for the American dream landed him in a legal battle you have to hear to believe. Our guide. A formal complaint filed with the Maryland Real Estate Commission. And that right there tells you this is serious stuff. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a case of a few cracks in the drywall. Right. A formal complaint to the commission means someone believes the law was broken, and we're talking potential consequences for the professionals involved. Okay, so let's break this down. The complaint centers around a homeowner named Nicholas Miles, who purchased a house from Eager Street Development 28 LLC, run by uh, Jeff Thompson. No. Oh. The construction itself was done by Two Bulls Construction, headed by Jacob Wittenberg. So far, pretty standard cast of characters for a real estate deal, wouldn't you say? On the surface, yes. But this is where it gets interesting. Nicholas Miles isn't just complaining. He's claiming a hefty sum, $100,000, from the Maryland Real Estate Guarantee Fund. The Guarantee Fund. Now, that has my attention. What exactly is that? It's essentially a safety net for homebuyers and sellers in Maryland. Think of it as a last resort if they suffer financial losses because a licensed real estate professional messed up, and I mean really messed up. The fact that Miles is going after this fund tells us right away that the allegations are serious. We're talking potential misconduct with real financial consequences. So not your average leaky faucet situation now. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's talk about the house itself. Miles claims it was marketed as a high-performance home. Sounds impressive. Yeah. What exactly was wrong with it? Well, that's the kicker. The complaint alleges known structural defects in both the basement and the roof. And get this, Miles claims these defects were never disclosed before he bought the property. Hold on. Known defects? Yeah. As in the developer, like, knew about these issues and sold the house anyway? That's the implication, yes. And it raises huge red flags. We're not talking about a fresh coat of paint here. Structural issues can have major implications for the safety and stability of the entire house, not to mention the property value. You know, for our listener who I know is interested in real estate, this is exactly the kind of scenario that keeps you up at night. Sure. Imagine thinking you've invested in your dream home only to find out it might be literally falling apart. Absolutely. And to make matters worse, the complaint states the cost of repairs is estimated to be a whopping $100,000. Ouch. That's a hefty repair bill for anyone, let alone someone who was allegedly misled about the condition of their new home. So... What happened next? Did Nicholas Miles have to bear the brunt of those repair costs himself? So did Nicholas just have to accept living in a construction disaster? What happened after he discovered these alleged defects? The complaint paints a picture of a frustrating and costly ordeal for Miles. Okay. He purchased the home at the end of 2017. Right. Over a year later, in April 2019, the board of EBCAC, that's the Housing Authority of Baltimore City, by the way, and they played a role in developing this community, agreed to step in and cover the repair costs. Sounds like good news, right? <laughs> it does. So do they fix the problems? <laughs> Here's the catch. According to the complaint, HEB SIC only ended up releasing $14,000 to a waterproofing company. $14,000. But we're talking about an estimated $100,000 worth of repairs. That's a huge difference. Exactly. And that's the crux of Nicholas Miles's complaint. He's claiming he was essentially abandoned, left to deal with a house riddled with structural issues and only a fraction of the funds needed to make things right. It's heartbreaking, really. You can almost feel the desperation in his words. He even mentions a Baltimore Sun article in the complaint, almost like a cry for help, hoping someone will take notice. Have you seen that article? I have. Okay. And it does raise some interesting points. The article discusses other homeowners in the Station East community who've raised concerns about similar construction defects in their homes. Wow. While we can't draw conclusions of about those specific cases, it does paint a concerning picture of a potentially systemic issue within this development. So it's not just one isolated incident. Right. That's even more troubling. It makes you wonder, if the developer was aware of these issues, as the complaint alleges, what responsibility do they bear, both legally and ethically? Those are precisely the questions the Maryland Real Estate Commission will be investigating. Remember, both Eager Street Development, the developer, and Two Bulls Construction, the builder, are named as respondents in this complaint. They will have the opportunity to present their side of the story as the investigation unfolds. This is where things get really complicated. Yeah. What are the potential outcomes here? What could this mean for the developer, the builder, and most importantly, Nicholas Miles? Well, there are a few different ways this could play out. The commission might decide there was no wrongdoing, in which case Nicholas Miles likely won't receive any compensation from the guarantee fund. However, 
if they determined there was a violation of real estate law, right. things could get interesting. Interesting in what way? What are we talking about here? Well, depending on the severity of the violation, mm. the commission has the authority to issue warnings, fines, even revoke or suspend licenses. And crucially for Nicholas Miles, they could rule in his favor, potentially awarding him up to $100,000 from the guarantee fund to cover those repair costs. Okay, so there's a light at the end of the tunnel for him, potentially. Okay. But this whole situation raises the bigger question. How common are cases like this? Is this just a one-off nightmare scenario, or should anyone looking to buy a new home be worried? While this case is extreme, it highlights a universal truth in real estate. Buyer beware. Mm. Whether you're buying new construction or a pre-owned home, there's always an element of risk. Right. That's why due diligence is crucial. So what can our listener do to protect themselves when buying a home? What are some red flags to watch out for, especially with new construction? First and foremost, never, ever skip the home inspection. Okay. And I'm not talking about a quick walkthrough. Hire a qualified independent inspector who will scrutinize every nook and cranny and give you a detailed report. It's better to uncover problems before you're locked into a mortgage. That's good advice. Yeah. Don't just rely on the shiny brochure and the developer's promises. Exactly. And speaking of promises, make sure you understand every single detail of your contract. Mm. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And if something doesn't seem right, get a second opinion from a real estate lawyer. Remember, you're making a major investment. It's your right to be informed. And this Baltimore Sun article really drives home another crucial point. Mm -hmm. Talk to the neighbors. They'll often give you the real scoop about a community, including any potential problems with the builder or developer. That's excellent advice. It's like that saying, if you see one cockroach. There are probably more hiding. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> and while no one wants to think about legal battles, it's wise to familiarize yourself with your rights as a home buyer in your state. What warranties are standard? What recourse do you have if things go south? Knowledge is power, especially when you're making a purchase as significant as a home. So what's the biggest takeaway you want our listener to walk away with today? Buying a home is exciting, but it's crucial to approach it with a healthy dose of caution and a commitment to thorough research. Mm. Ask questions, get independent advice, and trust your gut. Yeah. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Wise words. We'll be following Nicholas Miles' case closely and we'll keep you updated on any developments. In the meantime, listeners, have you ever encountered a buyer beware situation, whether in real estate or any other aspect of life? Share your stories with us. You can find us on our website or connect with us on social media. And remember, stay informed, stay curious, and stay protected.